Hey, welcome back. This is Rajesh Pillai with yet another episode on React. In this episode, we will have a look at what high order component is and some of its application. A high order component is a function that takes a component as an input and returns a decorated component as an output. So typically, HOC or high order component is a way to reuse some of the features in your application without repeating your code in all the places. Okay, so what we will build in this application is a image gallery kind of application uh, wherein while clicking on each of and any of the images we will show a model dialog so we will use the same model dialog component that we built in the last episode so you can get the last episode uh, uh, from this uh, url in here i'll share this url in the playlist uh, description before building our slideshow or image gallery uh, application let's see the fundamentals of a hoc component so you can open up the source code from the previous episode um, i'll share this in the uh, your video description or you can actually also create a new application and build things from scratch so within the components folder for now i'll create a new folder and i'll call it as hoc so this is where all our components uh, which is hoc will be stored in here inside this hoc i'll create a new file and i'll call it as with border.js so with border is an hoc component that we are creating so what we want that any component that we will wrap within this with border component should have a border around it so that's a very basic simple requirement kind of so let's first import react from react Okay, let's create a simple style we'll create a style with an attribute border which is two pixel dashed and maybe say red okay so this is actually for demonstration purpose uh, and this will actually clear up the concept of hoc very clearly then we'll create a constant name it as with border okay which takes a wrapped component and returns a new class okay so what is an hoc hoc is a function that takes a component and returns the definition of a new component so we'll return a class with extends from react dot component okay so every class ha uh, should have a render method and inside the render method we will return a div okay, this is a basic structure of an HOC uh, component so inside this div we have to return this wrap component back so let's say return wrapped component okay and also we'll apply this style to this div Okay, and one more thing we do is we'll actually pass all the props from the parent. Okay, I'll save this file. Okay, so what we have done here is let's have a close look at the uh, code before executing this. So we have created a simple HOC function. We call it as with border. Okay, a function is called with border this takes a wrapped component now this can be any component okay and this function returns a class which extends from react dot component now this is actually returning the definition of the class and not the instantiation okay this returns a definition okay and what we are doing within this is we are actually wrapping our component within a div and assigning it a style with a border of two pixel dash red color okay so this is what this hoc component is trying to uh, do kind of okay now we can actually use this hoc component uh, and see this in action so let's go back to our index.js and in the index.js we are loading up the app function so let's go to the app let's import this hoc so i'll say import with border from dot slash components slash hoc slash with border 
Okay, so we import this with uh, border component in, into the app.js file. And now actually we can wrap any component uh, within this with border high order component. So what we can do is uh, we'll uh, create a simple uh, div here maybe. So let's create a simple uh, div or any kind of element that we can wrap in there. Uh, let's okay so let's wrap our input component that is in here within the border so what I can do this uh, is this so I say let with border input is equal to with border and I can pass the input tag component Okay, so I'll say let with border input and we'll use the with border high order function and pass in the input tag component. Now this with border will return a class. Okay, so if you look at this definition, so with border is taking input tag. Now this can take any function, right? Inside this with border, this wrap component at this point will be input tag. So we are, we are wrapping this input tag within a div which has a style that we have defined in here. So now instead of uh, rendering this, what we can uh, do is we can render with border input. Okay. So now this with border input is our input component with and it's decorated with a border kind of. So I'll save this and uh, go back to our application. So we get the error message like uh, export default imported with border was not found. Okay. Let's go back and look at, at the code again. so we haven't exported this so I'll say export default with border I will save this and come back to the application now you see that our input component is wrapped within a border here the red border that you uh, see in here this is the way uh, an HOC can decorate or add additional behavior or features to your existing component Okay, now let's uh, fix a couple of things in here. Now if you look at uh, your Chrome debugger and if you install the React developer tools, you can actually uh, go to the Chrome debugger and uh, bring up the React tab in here. And if I dig into this uh, element, you will see that within the React section, you see this underscore class, which is our decorator input tag component now this is underscore class here because we haven't named this uh, decorated function now if you're a lot of uh, high order functions and if the name is like underscore class or something right it's not very easy to troubleshoot so let's fix this and give it a name so that we can get a meaningful name in the debugging or troubleshooting window so i'll go back to my application here with uh, in this with border.js and uh, what i'll do first is so instead of directly kind of returning here i'll uh, create a class first and i'll call it as maybe say underscore with border this is just the naming convention i am using okay so that i can access this uh, inner class or the class that is being written with a name in here so once i have access to this name i can uh, come back to the bottom of this class and give it a display name so i could say with border dot display name is equal to with border and then I can return with border from here okay and finally I'll return the or export the uh, with border function that we created so what this will enable is is to kind of give a name to this anonymous class that we are returning here now once I do this and save the file and go back to my react uh, troubleshooting window in here and if I expand this now you'll see the width border getting uh, displayed in here right so this is much more better than having an anonymous class name kind of thing 
Now once this uh, name is assigned we can uh, go back to our code and let's uh, see one more thing. Now the pattern that we have seen for creating an HOC is that we create a function or a functional component that takes a wrap component and returns a stateful component or a class component. This is the pattern and inside this component we return the wrap component and also we will actually pass in this dot props. Now why this, this dot props is required? Okay, so let's take a moment and go back to our app.js. We see that the width border input component has a placeholder parameter that is being passed. Okay, so that width border input at this point has some props being passed. Now, if we go back to this component and if we remove this dot props from here, what will happen is this placeholder properties will not be passed to our actual wrapped component, which in this case is the input tag. Okay, now if I save this and uh, go back to the application, you will see that placeholder is not displayed here. So as a practice, whenever we build the HOC component, ensure that the wrapped component passes all the prop that is available kind of thing. So that essentially means all these props has to be available, which is required by the component being wrapped. So I'll save this and go back again and you see the placeholder being displayed in here correctly. Now let's build our slideshow or the image gallery app that we discussed uh, before the start of this session. So let's go back to the code and rather than kind of updating the existing app, uh, let's create a new app here. So I'll uh, create a new file uh, at, at this root level, I'll create a new file maybe. Okay, I'll call it as app slideshow.js okay so okay, I'll import react I'll create a export default class the name app slideshow with which extends from react dot component and this has a render method which return a div for now an empty div for now okay so I have this app slideshow let's go back to our index.js and import the app slideshow here instead of rendering the app let's render the app slideshow so at this point in time if you go back to your browser you will get an empty screen okay because we are not rendering anything from this app slideshow okay let's go back to the code and uh, put some information in here So I need a list of images. So I'll create a state with some random images here. So I am actually using the lorem pixel and we are loading a couple of images from the sports, animals, business, cats and other section. Okay. Now the important thing to note here is, okay, all these images are dynamically loaded and it may happen that the same URL may re result in different images. So now what we need to do is we had to create an image gallery or slideshow using all this array of images. Okay, and then what we want is when we click on the image, we want that specific image to be shown in the model dialog. Okay, so there are a couple of things uh, that we will uh, do in here. The first thing that I'll do is rather than coding the entire thing in here, I'll actually create a new component called slideshow. Okay, and I'll pass in a props of slides, which is nothing but this dot states dot images. Okay, so I am passing these images as props to my slideshow class. Okay, so at this point, if you go to the browser, you will get the message that uh, slideshow is not defined. Okay, so let's kind of go back and create this slideshow component. Okay, so let's go back to our components. Right click and uh, create a new folder. Let's call it as slideshow. So inside the slideshow, 
Now we'll actually creep a naming convention. We'll actually create a file called index.js, which is the entry point. Okay, and in here we have to import the React. Okay, and then export a class. which extends from react dot component okay and it has a render method that renders something right so it will return something from here now if you observe the structure of this application right so here this slideshow actually receives slides as a props okay that essentially means we have to loop through all these slides and then create the images Okay, so let's go back to our slideshow application. Now I could write write the code in here, but to man, kind of make it maintainable, we'll create one more component called slide, which will represent the individual images from the application. Okay, so let's uh, go back here and uh, create a new file called slide.js. Okay. So I have a new file called slide.js. Now this slide.js, this will represent one file actually. Okay, it has a render method. Okay, and this will be passed a URL as a props. Okay, we'll see this. And this return a div with a class name of slide. Okay. And uh, inside this, we will load the image with the source of URL. Okay, so we have a simple slide component that takes the URL as the props and renders the image within a div with a class of slide. Okay, now we can use this slide component within our slideshow component okay so let's go back to our slideshow component and uh, import slide from slide okay so before returning anything here let's go back and loop through all the slides this dot props dot slides dot map for every slide let's return a slide with the key of slide dot id and a data of slide Okay, so what we are doing here is uh, we are looping through all the slides and for every slide we are returning a slide component. Okay, uh, but now if you look at the slide component, the slide component is expecting a URL here, right? So let's go back and correct this here. So instead of data, I'll say URL and then I'll say slides.url. Okay, I'll just make some correction here. So instead of sending the entire slide, I'll say slide.url. Okay, and once we have the array of slides here, we can render back this entire slides within a div with the class name of slide container. Okay, and uh, I'll put the variable in here. Okay, I'll save this file and uh, go back and look at the output here okay so we get an error here in app slide.js mentioning that slideshow is not uh, defined so let's go to the 
app slideshow.js okay and let's import the slideshow from here okay so i'll say import slideshow from component slash slideshow okay i'll save this and come back in here again and uh, we get the error like module not found can't resolve component slash slideshow so it is a spelling mistake here so this should be slideshow okay i'll save this and come back to the browser okay and now you get a different error you get the error that uh, this start state dot images is not defined within the app slideshow so let's correct this so within the app slideshow so we are passing this dot state dot images correctly so i'll save this entire thing for a moment and go back again and have a look at this images of undefined okay let's verify this so this dot state is undefined so we have app slideshow here we have the state here and uh, we are returning slideshow slides this dot states dot images and within the slideshow this dot state this should be state okay so i'll save this and uh, go back to the browser and you get a list of images okay so the mistake was actually mentioned here states instead of state now let's also put some basic css to this so that this looks like a grid or something like that so i'll come back to the slideshow folder and create a new file called slideshow.css okay and i'll put some simple uh, styles here so what i do here is i create a slide container with a display of flex and the flex flow of set to row wrap so that the rows are correctly wrapped and we justify the content to center and align the items to center okay justify content means all these slides will be arranged from center perspective okay and the individual slides has a minimum width of 400 pixels a margin of 15 pixel and the text align is set to center Okay, that's that's the basic style that is kind of uh, required in here. So let's go back to our index.js and import this CSS. Import CSS. Now once we save this and uh, come back to the application, you will see that all the images are laid out in grid fashion. Okay, so we are done with displaying the basic images in a grid fashion in here. Now what we need to import implement here is whenever we click on these images we want that respective image to be shown in a dialog box and that's where our HOC component for the dialog box or the model box will come into play so go to the HOC folder right click and create a new file I'll uh, name this file as with model.js so this will be our HOC component for model I'll import react as well as the model from the models folder here right so this model we already built in the last episode i'll share a link to this okay so this model is nothing but it's a simple component that is styled as a model with a backdrop and a model style and a photo style okay so refer the previous video video for this model tutorial so what we have to do here is create a const called with model so okay, HOC is a function that takes a component to be wrapped okay, and it returns a new class. So I'll uh, use name here so that while debugging we get the name instead of anonymous class. Okay, and this class extends from react.component. Okay, this is the basic structure and uh, 
after, after this I will put the display name here so that I can see this in the chrome debugger and call it as with model and then I will return with model ok the same basic structure that we did for the with border component or HOC component ok and then export default with model function ok so this is the with model function that we are creating and not we are uh, and not the class that we are creating ok so this is the function ok so now we have the structure for a simple with model component right so every class component has a render method ok so we will wrap this in a div ok and the first thing that we have to do here is we have to return our wrapped component as a practice we have to pass all the props right so this we remember from our previous example kind of so that all the props are available here so what we want is we want these images to be displayed immediately ok that's, that's this wrapped component but we also want this to be wrapped within a model ok so we have to also wrap this within a model Okay, now see we are using this wrap component two times in here right so this model this will only be displayed when we click on the div okay that's the only time this model will be displayed okay so there are a couple of things that i need to do to make it work so i need to kind of put in a props here called show okay so show this model only if the state is set to is open So by default this model will not be shown and then on whenever the model calls the on close event we will call the on close on this class ok so this is the basic structure right and one more thing we have to do here is inside this div so whenever the div is click ok so whenever the div is click we have to show the model right so we'll say this dot on show ok so now we have the basic component uh, ready let's have a close look at this and then implement this on show method and the other methods ok so what we are doing here is we are creating a functional component called with model that takes a wrap component and it returns a stateful component called with model which has a display name of with model and within this model we are wrapping our wrap component with a div on which we are attaching an on click handler so that whenever the div is click okay then only the model should be displayed okay so this wrap component will be displayed immediately because we want the photo show be to be shown in the grid and also we want to show the same photo in a model dialog whenever the click happens okay so let's go back and implement the on show method now okay so let's come to this model and uh, let's say give it a state so by default the state is is open is set to false ok and when the click happens we call the on show method ok and then here we will set the state of is open to true ok so now I think you got the connection right so initially the state is false so the model will not be displayed but when you click on the image or the div ok the on show will change the state to true ok now when within the model when you click the close button the on close method is invoked right so let's implement the on close event as well ok so here we will say this dot set state is open is false ok so let's save this and uh, see whether any error is there or not ok so at this point in time I can go back to my application and I see no errors in here ok but when I click on this nothing will happen ok the reason is that we haven't yet wrapped this individual slides within the width model 
HOC function, right? So let's go back to our code. Okay, now we are actually using the slide here. We have to wrap this within a model. So I'll create a new variable called slide with model and I'll say with model of slide. So we have to import the with model HOC function here. So I'll say import with model from HOC slash with model. Okay, so what we are doing here is we are importing the with model functional component. Then we are creating a template for the slide with model using the with model and passing in the slide. Okay, now instead of using the slide here, we will use slide with model. Okay, and passing in the key as well as the URL. Okay, nothing changes here. We are just decorating our slide with a model. So if I save this and uh, go back to our uh, application, you will see that uh, there is some error in our uh, with model.js. I think I am not destructuring these dot props correctly here. So let's go back to the with model component. And uh, instead of this dot props, you will say, okay, take everything from this dot props and spread it in the wrap component. Okay, let's save this again and go back to the application. Okay. Similarly in the on the above component as well. One um, one about this model. Okay, I'll just wrap put these three dots here and save this. Okay, so now we are getting the message your under method should have a return statement. Okay, that's fine. Let's go back to our with model component and we are not returning anything from our under method. Okay, so let's return this div here. Okay, so I'll say return this entire div. Okay, and I'll wrap this within a parenthesis. Okay, I'll save this. Now go back to our browser. And now we are getting the error that model cannot be resolved. That's fine. Okay, let's do this correction as well. So we will go into this uh, with model.js. Okay, so inside the with model.js, we're actually getting the model. Okay, here actually, since I am not using index.js as a naming, I have to give model.model here. Okay, because within this model, we have the model.js file, right? So I'm just changing the path here. So I'll save this and go back. Now you have all the applications being rendered correctly, all the images, right? So now if I click on any image, you'll see that image is being rendered in this model dialog. Now you'll see that the image that is being rendered is not the one that I have clicked, right? This is because uh, it's not because of any bug in the application. This is because the URL is giving me dynamic images. Okay, but in your case, the images should work if it is coming from a static source. Okay, now the close button is not kind of working here, right? So let's kind of fix this out. Okay, so let's go back to our application. Let's go to the model.js from our previous episode and uh, the model jo the model dot js already calls props dot on close so that's fine so let's go to this uh, on close here so whenever the close happens we are actually calling this dot on close okay and within the on close we are setting is open to false okay let me check whether we are actually getting in here alert on close I'll save this go back to the application click on the image click on close yeah I'm getting on close but for some reason my state is not getting changed okay so let's go back to the code again Okay, so let's kind of use our callback syntax for setting the state. So I get the previous state. Okay, and then I'll say return a new state wherein is open is set to false. Okay, let's save this and uh, go back to our application. Click on the image, click on close. 
and it's kind of still not closing okay the issue was because of the event propagation so if you look at this component now the with model com uh, class component that we have right it's actually wrapping the model component now if i go to the model component the model component has a button on which the click happens okay so in case in your model component the e dot stop propagation is not uh, there then you will get this issue because what will happen is on click of this button the event will be propagated to the parent component so in this case the parent component is this with model and within the parent component you will see that div also has an on click event right so what used to happen was when the on close was called after the on close immediately the on click was also kind of invoked in here right which was kind of setting the state back to open and that's why you had this issue of uh, the dialog not getting closed to fix this uh, what you can do is you can go to the model and put e dot stop propagation in the on close method okay and this is kind of the best practice to do uh, to fix this in case you are not doing this for some reason maybe right so what you can also do is kind of in the on show method you can check whether if the target node name is a button if yes you can just return it from here right so once you do this change and uh, save the file i am actually changing the on close back to the normal set state method and not using the callback syntax for set state you can come back to the application in here and uh, you will see that as these images are getting loaded if i click on any image uh, it's actually taking up time to come up right so if i click on the close button the model gets closed correctly okay this kind of thing will fix out this issue okay maybe i can uh, kind of just click on this for a moment and wait for this because of my internet connection you see that my images are not getting loaded here or maybe it's very slow to get loaded here right so when i click on the close we have set e dot stop propagation which will stop the parent event getting propagated as well and this will fix up the closing of the model dialog issue I hope now this clears the concept of high order component and just to summarize what we did a high order component is a functional component that takes a component to be wrapped and it returns a class component and within the class component you also return your wrap component and pass in all the props that is required for making debugging easy we also attach a display name to the wrapped component Okay, so now you can actually kind of make use of this high order component and build the uh, features that are usable across multiple concerns okay thereby reducing or avoiding the duplicate or code duplication kind of thing okay there's one more way to reuse uh, functionality or component which is known as render props which we will be co uh, covering in subsequent episodes thank you very much and have a nice day